If you've been following my blog, you'll know that recently I've been finishing off the designs for the program counter, memory and incrementer. If you haven't been following my blog, why not? Tis a thing of beauty. OK, maybe not beauty, but it is informative. OK, maybe not that either, but it is a blog. Let's settle at that. Anyhow, there's a link for the My Not Beautiful, Not Informative blog in the description below. So, with the designs out of the way, it means I'm ready to enter another period of construction on my computer. And to do that, I've had to dust off the cobwebs from my wallet, warm up the credit cards, and get buying lots of relays, extraordinarily priced switches for the displays, plus lots of other bits and bobs. And whilst I was in a spending mood, I thought I'd treat the computer to some more laser cut goodies. In this video, I'll share a little of the pleasures and building anticipation of buying in some bespoke laser cut parts. Off we go then. This isn't the first time I've had laser cut parts made for the computer. And here is the primary switches panel, which has been laser cut and etched from 3mm perspex. Above it are displays A and B, which are sporting an altogether cheaper alternative made of paper. And why paper? Well, it's a lot easier and quicker to have another go if your design doesn't quite work. The bezel around the display is removable. Go on lad, give it some welly. I'll come back to that bezel later in the video. You can now see how with the top bar removed, the two panels could slide into the upper case. In the case of paper, there's an easier way to remove them. So, the first rule of making bespoke parts? Always prototype on paper first. Try it, tweak the design, try again, keep going until you're 100% happy. OK, let's fast forward a bit. I've taken the displays out of the enclosure and fitted all the switches the computer will eventually need. Seriously, these are expensive switches. Like nearly £4 a pop, but they look so good. I'm using a company called Razor Lab to do my cutting, and the process is easy enough if you're a dab hand at using Inkscape, Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. Razor Lab provides templates for all three. This is Inkscape, and all you do is use blue lines to note a cut and a grey fill for an etch. Then you upload your design, choose your material, cough up some money, and then wait patiently by your front door for the parcel to arrive. I love this part. You worry, did you get that design right? Was it measured properly? Will it arrive in more or less parts than you ordered? Would it be quicker to open it with two hands rather than one? Oh, I can't bear the suspense. Here we go. Oh, looking good. Oh, I just love this Perspex. So nice. So, so nice. All the cuts are looking really clean. The lettering's looking good. How about the other one? Yep, no, that's looking good as well. Really pleased. Not sure it's just if it's a sense of relief, but I always feel good when uh, looking at these new laser cut parts. So they look good, but do they fit? Sorry, sorry, I'll stop with the, uh, the cheap, nasty sound effects. As you can see though, they're pretty much identical to the paper templates, which is nice to know that uh, the, uh, my printer's working properly. Next job then is to try and brighten some of that uh, lettering up. And this is something I've done before on the uh, main switches panel. So I'm using a white pen here just to infill the letters. And uh, it takes a bit of a, uh, a steady uh, resolve here because uh, it does go all over the place. But, uh, but trust me, this, this will work. And to be fair, I'm probably making more of a mess than usual because I'm uh, holding a camera with one hand and the pen with the other. So after it's had a few minutes to dry, the trick is then to use a little thing called Plastex. 
uh, which is really good for uh, acrylic and uh, perspex um, and just dab at it lightly uh, give it a bit of a rub and then uh, keep on alternating between the wet and the dry bit of the cloth and eventually you'll get something that looks all right There you go, beautiful. And so after much repetition, this is what you get. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, uh, time to get rid of the uh, paper templates and put the real thing in its place. Uh, first of all, though, just worth noting that actually it's, uh, it's quite transparent, this actually. So uh, let's a fair bit of light through and that kind of adds to the effect. Uh, but here we go, um, off with the paper, and on with the real thing. Very nice. Okay, and uh, there we go, that's what it looks like. And same for the display B. Job is a good one. So, uh, why not fit them to the uh, enclosure then? So, here we go, sliding in display B. A uh, bit of a tight fit, but uh, just fits in just nicely. There we go. And fast forwarding a bit more. Uh, so now we've got both displays in, uh, all in place. And we've also put the metal bar on the top now, and that's firmly fixed down. So uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll, uh, I'll finish off just by running a single instruction through the computer. And there you go, you can see it all lighting up nicely. Um, very nice. This is just a, a single XOR ALU instruction, so it's just loading the bus up there with a, all the bits. Very nice. And I mentioned that bezel earlier on. Well, there it is now with the uh, final piece of Perspex uh, filled in. And that just clips onto the front there. And there you go, that looks even nicer. Should keep the dust out of it as well. Okay, so as always, you can find more information on my blog at reallycomputer.blogspot.co.uk. But for now, that's it. See you next time.